This episode of The Dog Show features Vanessa Egan Smith. Vanessa is the owner and operator of Grape to Glass Boutique Wine Tours. Grape to Glass is a family run business that hosts wine tours in the Hunter Valley region of New South Wales. Its tours are 100% pet friendly, can be customized for specific requirements, and are five star rated on TripAdvisor. In the interview, we discuss the ins and outs of planning a dog-friendly wine tour. Vanessa, welcome to the Dog Show today. Thanks for coming on. You're welcome, Will. Nice to be here. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun today because we're going to talk all about dog-friendly wine tours, which is your your job. So, um, but before we jump into that, can you tell me a bit more about your own experiences with dogs? Do you have a dog of your own? That's a silly question. Of course, I have. <laughs> no, I, I should say no. I don't have a dog of my own. I have multiple dogs. Yeah. Um, of course. And it's always a challenge not to have bring more dogs home. Um, so funny uh, story for you. I, I'm from Sydney originally. We moved here about six years ago. And uh, being from the, the centre of Sydney, we didn't have a dog. Logging for a dog, didn't have a dog, was content with a cat sort of. Um, sort of. <laughs> yeah, sort of. Not the, I mean, I love cats, but it's not the same, same thing. Uh, moved here and my husband uh, had grown up with a fear of dogs because his mum bitten as a child um so I said to him you know we're going to get a dog the minute we move to the hunter that is like literally the first thing um that we're going to do and he's like yeah yeah that's fine you know so um I I met a lovely lady who had rescued a dog literally off the street sent me some photos of it and she said "I, I can't afford to keep this dog I've got five of my own already and four cats and six goats or something you know um being a lovely country lady and would you be interested in adopting this dog I said we absolutely are I'm in love with this it was like a little it was just he was was 10 weeks old when I met him so it's just like a little brown maybe a bit of staffy a bit of kelpie something in him and I said absolutely just can't be too big my husband's you know he's getting used to dogs she said I don't think it'll be too big (laughs) so um so I said the only catch is we're going away we're back where you could go overseas we're going overseas for two and a half weeks and uh, she said, don't, don't worry, I'll get the vax, you pay for me, pay for it, et cetera, et cetera, and everything will be done. Um, all the vet checks will be done by the time you get back. And um, so we took a risk with that, came back. This dog had grown so much. <laughs> the paws had exploded. The head was huge. And I thought, oh, this is not going to be a small dog. This is going to be not even a me. I promised my husband medium at best. This dog's going to be big. Anyway, so we don't know what he is. His name is Gizmo. We think he's like a staffy cross Labrador cross Kelpie, and he's 38 kilos. So, uh, <laughs> so he's not small. He's, he's five now. He's very bonded to my daughter, who's eight, and um, he's our first dog. And our second dog is Frankie, who we adopted during the first COVID lockdown, and uh, he's an American Bulldog cross of some sort. Right. So we've got the two. Uh, people are always trying to give me extra dogs, but um, so far we've managed to cap it at two, and we'll hopefully keep it that way. It makes it easier to travel. The name Gizmo, it's almost like you were hoping it was going to be a small dog. <laughs> I thought it was going to be medium at best. Yeah. I could see he had a bit of Kelpie in him, mm. maybe a bit of English Staffy, I was thinking. No. he's. I think he's got some Labrador in him. He's a, a, he's a canine vacuum cleaner. Yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're both big. I think he's 35 on a diet and the other one's 33 kilos. So they're pretty large dogs. Um, but yeah, I think if we get a third dog, that's going to be a chihuahua or something. It's going to be <laughs> balance it out. Dogs you can fit in the car. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, my dog's my day dog's name's Frankie as well. Actually, uh, she's a friend. It's really common. Yeah, it is yeah. common. I, I thought it was unique when I first uh, when we picked the name, so did but I. <laughs> it's <Yep>. not. <laughs> Every second dog I forget is a Gizmo or a Frankie. <laughs> Um, um, and then you get all your, your other names, but yeah. Yeah, I interviewed someone last week on the show who um, has a, a dachshund called Frankie as well. So you just can't escape it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think it would be one of the most popular dog names. So not original, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so for people who aren't, aren't familiar with Sydney in the area, the Hunter where you are, the Hunter Valley is kind of like wine country. It's two hours north of Sydney, um, yeah. which is why you have started this business all about dog-friendly wine tours. So so tell me how you decided to get into that in the first place. That's, um, well, I knew you were going to ask me that question. Thought, <laughs> how do I explain this? Because it's not like I woke up one day and went, oh, how do I make a million dollars? Let's start a dog-friendly wine <laughs> Just as well, because that's not what you're going to do to make a million dollars. But um, we, we moved here. We, we live, I'm sitting in wine country as we speak, um, 
we're planting our own vineyard, we're surrounded by vineyards. So it's a really nice place to be, particularly at the moment. Um, when I decided to start this company, I had been working for a vineyard for a couple of years, which was great, got lots of experience, love talking about wine, love obviously, as you probably get it, having a chat. Um, <laughs> And I could see from working in the industry, both in the terms of accommodation and um, wine vineyards, um, that no one was doing tours that catered to families or to dogs, which is crazy. I mean, Will, you're sitting, I'm sitting in the oldest wine region in Australia. We are by far the biggest region mm. in terms of tourism. Um, yes, the Barossa is big, the Hunter is huge, being so proximal to Sydney and Newcastle. Um, and everything in between. So I could see that there was a gap and I'd been working at the vineyard for a while and I just, I wanted to do something, I wanted to start my own business and do something that sort of gave back a little bit. Mm. Um, so we do actually contribute some of our funds to Dog Rescue Newcastle and it all just kind of happened organically. I could see there was a gap in the market. We did a bit of research. Um, I got approached. We looked at, you know, what does it take to, to get this to happen? And it just um, it just kind of happened organically. We bought our first vehicle was actually a Forester. Um, I used to have a Forester as well. Forester, <laughs> no, good good car. And the funny thing is, coming from this is the thing. I've always got one foot in the country and one in the city because I'm from Sydney. So in the city, a Forester is amazing. Mm. Out here, that's a tiny car. <laughs> yeah. like, no one owns a Forester out in. You know, I live in Broke Fortich, which is a little sub region of, of wine country. No one, you know, Land Cruiser at the bare minimum. <laughs> so that was our car. We used that for a bit. And then we went, you know what? We have no idea. We thought this was just going to be a little niche product we were starting. It was a nice to, you know, fill a gap in the market. Um, as I said, no one was doing dog friendly tours or specifically catering to, to dog owners. And um, then we sort of went and bought a eight-seater van and decked it out. So, you know, it's got all the – everything you could need for having dogs in the car. Mm. Got some fantastic signage and away we went. It just kind of – you know, the more interest we got, the more we grew the business kind of thing. Um, and now we're doing about 150 dog-friendly tours a year. So fairly busy yeah. and growing. One, one every second day, basically. <laughs> basically, yeah. So we run yeah. a tour – days a week mm. um, we were doing seven but I do need I'm a human being I need a day off <laughs> yeah yeah definitely <laughs> and it's hard our our I do predominantly most of the tours but occasionally I will get someone else to fill in and you need that person to have experience wine industry experience mm. as well as dog experience and that's not an easy thing to find so we are working on bringing a second van on and a second tour every day but we're not quite there yet I mean, it sounds like the perfect fit for you. Your bubbly personality. You like wine. You like dogs. You know what a better Who what a business. Yeah, well, I wouldn't trust someone that they're, doesn't like wine they're, and dogs. <laughs> they're, def they're definitely two of my loves. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel silly saying who knew it would be this popular, but of course it would be. You know, you put it out there, and and as I said to you before, the the thing is just getting getting the message out there that it exists. Mm. that you don't have to ring an established tour company and beg them to take their dog, you know, your dog. There is a dog-friendly tour company here, um, and we try to balance both aspects, making sure that you get amazing service and amazing wine experience, but that your dog is fully catered for as well. Yeah, well, I think society in general is becoming more dog-friendly. I, I read an article the other day where they're talking about um, domestic flights allowing dogs in the cabin, which they I haven't done that. before. Yeah, that'd be I cool. Was virgin. Mm. yeah. I'm not sure how that would work. From my experience, we all, anyone that owns a dog and goes to dog parks, you know what dog parks are like. You know that you mix small dogs and big dogs and, you know, how's that going to work on a flight? I don't know. Well, they do it I, They do it in the United States. I've been on a couple of flights over there, but I think it's generally small dogs, probably sub 10 kilos you can have on your lap kind of thing. It would have to be. Yeah. would have to be. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I, I love my dogs, but would I take them on a flight? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Might be hard if gizmos on top of you on a... <laughs> So yeah, that's yeah. Cost prohibitive, but yeah, yeah it's yeah. interesting. It's definitely a sign of the times. Yeah, definitely. So, how do you plan a, a dog-friendly wine tour? Then, what does that look like? Um, well, I mean, obviously, we've we've got it pretty finely tuned mm. now. <laughs> but um, you know, to explain it, I guess to people who who don't do this for a living, um, you know, we take the philosophy that we're not just allowing the dog on the tour. The dog is a member of the family or of the group and needs to be catered for just as much as you drinking wine needs to be catered for. So um, we have about 20 or so vineyard partners that we work with and they're used to seeing us several times a week. They know exactly how our tours run. 
we always look to do four tours, uh, four vineyards, sorry, a lunch venue, all of which are dog friendly. Mm. Um, and you need to make sure, you know, you don't know exactly what you're going to get with dogs. It could be a tiny little chihuahua. It could be a, a Kelpie puppy that needs four hours of walking a day. <laughs> don't laugh. It's happened. Uh, and I was the one walking it. Um, you know, so you need to obviously have some opportunities for on lead exercise. Um, and you know, I, I always just ask a few screening questions. Obviously you're going to say, Hey, what sort of dog have you got? Mm. If you've got a handbag chihuahua, that's going to be a completely different thing to a gizmo, for example. Mm. Um, or probably I should use the example of my other one who needs a lot of exercise. So if you've got a dog that needs exercise and who's going to be bored on an eight hour tour, mm. then you need to have opportunities for on and off lead exercise. So we've got some vineyard partners that we go to that allow off leash exercise. That obviously assumes same rules as a dog park. Obviously, it assumes that your dog's well socialised. Mm. Um, and I've touched wood. I've never had a problem. Um, and then obviously opportunities at lunch to stretch the legs. And that's good for everyone. You know, the humans have had lots of wine, lots of food. We always include chocolate pairing on our um, tours. So there's a lot of uh, food being consumed and everyone needs a good walk after lunch. So we just make sure we schedule time in. Mm. Um, and I think just working with a set sort of um, list of vineyards that, that you know, you know what the seating layout is like. So if you do have a dog, you know, we had a lot of dogs, Will, that were adopted during the first uh, COVID lockdown who had not been socialised, not through yeah. anyone's fault, but they were just COVID puppies that had not, you know, never left the house basically. So they were quite anxious. Mm. And it's just asking questions and, okay, how socialised is your dog? Okay, so we might have some problems with anxiety. Let's sit you over here. So just knowing the layout of how each place works um, and sort of tailoring it to the sort of dog that you've got. If they're very active, then they're going to need a bit of exercise. If they're anxious, you need to take that into consideration. You know, some dogs, you know, they're dog reactive to big dogs but not small dogs, etc. So this is all the things that come with doing dog-friendly tours. Mm. It's yeah. not just a one-size-fits-all, throw your dog in the van, away we go. It's It's just... You know, what sort of dog do you have? Let's tailor it around them a little bit. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because I just assumed there'd be, you know, a melting pot of dogs potentially, which all different yeah. personalities and that could cause a lot of issues. But you're taking so, a lot of steps to make sure that you can position people in the right areas and plan the tour yeah. around that and everything, yeah. Yes. So, and also I guess, interest, uh, you know, importantly, mm. our, do our tours are all private tours. Mm. So you can take maximum two dogs on the van. It's an eight-seater van, so it's quite big. But the dogs have to know each other. Yeah. But that still doesn't mean if you're going to a vineyard that's well known as being dog friendly, you are going to come across other dogs. Yeah. Whether the, you know, obviously you've probably heard of wine dogs, you know, the wine dogs book. I haven't most... actually. <laughs> but Well, where have you been? <laughs> I know. Under a rock <laughs> apparently. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Under a rock. Yeah, <laughs> under a rock. I wish I had a copy here now. Um so there's a very quite well known book uh called Wine Dogs of Australia. They do oh, one right. for each country actually, and each vineyard has a dog and they get their portrait. They've got a professional photographer that comes out and it's like a coffee table hardcover book that goes for around $50 a year. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah. So most of the vineyards now are really hopping on board with dog friendly, but they will have a resident dog or two. So you need to know how does that resident dog behave around other dogs. So there's there's lots of stuff that goes in the planning. Mm. Um, I've been doing it enough now that I can just – yeah, I don't have to put too much thought into it. As soon as you give me a profile of what your dog's like, I'll go, right, this is a dog we can take everywhere or maybe we won't go to that place and that place, but these two will be definitely in the mix. So it's just knowing all the ins and outs of um, the partners that you work with and, um, you know, and, and just keeping, I mean, obviously you've got to keep everyone safe and happy. Mm. Yeah, so you've got, I mean, you go to wineries, but you also go to, what, breweries and distilleries as well. Yeah. What are yeah, some... Yeah. What, what are some of the special things that the dog-friendly versions of those do for, for pet owners, like treats and things like that? Yeah, so there's, there's a whole spectrum. This is what I would say. Um, if you travel with your dogs, I'm sure lots of your listeners do, there's a whole spectrum with dog friendly As there is with dog-friendly accommodation, you know, we've got a spectrum of places that are like, yeah, you, know, you can walk in and instantly know that they've got the dog bowl out. And, you know, there's a dog bed. You know that place is geared for dogs. Mm. Um, and it's the same with vineyards. Some sort of tolerate you bringing your dog right through the other end of the spectrum that are, you know, they've got treats, they've got water bowls on the ready. You know, one of the places we go to – am I allowed to mention places? I don't know if I can – Yeah, sure. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, the Ridge is, is fantastic and they have um, – 
they have a huge selection of handmade dog treats that you can buy. They've got a pooch hydration station. All of this stuff's great for photos too. It's just yeah. so much fun. So you get a few vineyards that we tend to go to a lot that are obviously the minute you walk in with or without a dog, you know it's geared towards people and their dogs. Um, a lot of them sell. There's a local lady that set, makes um, handmade treats. I've actually got some here, if that's okay, to show you. Sure. So this is one. Can you see that? Uh, yeah, it's like a dog bone. It's a hundred percent a dog bone biscuit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it looks like hundreds of thousands on the outside. This is, this is made in a human, with human grade ingredients. Each okay. one has like an individual expiry date. It's made in a, a professional kitchen. And she, we've got loads of different patterns. So these, this is a local lady. She just lives up the road. She's amazing. She sells those into a lot of the vineyards. So mm. you can walk in and buy those. Um, I think Pepper Tree has like a dog membership. So you can sign up for a membership with a vineyard, but your dog can sign up as well. So it's definitely a, a real trend in the market at the moment. Um, we carry these treats as well. So if you go on a dog-friendly wine experience with us, um, each dog, depending on the size, gets one or two. Um, you know, a bigger dog might get two and they'll generally inhale them. And a smaller dog, you know, you get like your little noodles. They will, uh, that will take all day for a little noodle to eat or yeah. a Maltese Shih Tzu. Um, and sometimes they just go home in the, the handbag because the dog's on a diet. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, definitely we work with a whole um, range of places that are... Pepper are Tree is a beautiful fish. vineyard, by the way. It, I mean, the whole set up there. Sorry? <laughs> Gorgeous. We've yeah. got so many, though. I mean, Pepper yeah. Tree is very well known. Mm. Um, they're part of the John Davis group, so mm. there's also Carillion and Briar Ridge, and, uh, which are a little bit further away. They're all fantastic. Yep. Um, and quite often, you know, it's not that hard. I mean, everyone can jump onto Google now and, and Google dog-friendly vignettes. Um, some of the best ones don't advertise as dog-friendly. Mm. They're run by French people, and they don't feel that they have to. That's just dogs are part of life. You know, for for the French, you don't they don't advertise that they're dog friendly, but they're so dog friendly it's ridiculous. Um, well, it's impossible for someone that might go to the hunter once every year or once every two years to have all the inside knowledge that you've got about the you know the best places to go yeah. and how to plan it and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and that's that's the benefit of being a tour guide is we do this so many times in a week and mm. we're on the ground all the time and you see what works and what doesn't and obviously we've got enough experience now to go okay we need to rethink how we do things with that place or you know so it's very um fine-tuned now mm. um and as i said I, I live and work here my kids go to school here so you know we're part of the community and part of the fun of going on a wine tour is that you can just have someone take you and have a few wines and not worry about it, right? Oh, let's, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you yeah, know, that's going to be the number one attraction. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And depending on how inebriated the, pet, the dog parents are getting, I, I tend to sort of apologize to the dog in advance and make sure it gets a meal while I'm there because yeah. I don't know what's going to happen that night. It's like, mm, your parents <laughs> might just put you in the crate and go to bed tonight. I'm not sure. So, yeah, but definitely, like, relax, you know, um, mm. once in, uh, uh, you know, once probably you know, up to a couple of years ago it was a bit of a um best kept secret there was no police on the road here mm. they're everywhere yeah at the moment don't risk it mm. do not risk drink driving absolutely it's got to be the number one benefit of going on a tour right let's not beat around the bush yeah um have someone do the planning the inside knowledge bring you so we bring lots of you know um inclusions that you can't get if you just walk in by mm. yourself um and just you know keep everyone safe and happy and I think it's also important um I would never encourage anyone to get drunk essentially when they need to look after their dog so having a tour that's just planned um because I mean the dog's already in a strange place probably they're maybe got some anxiety because of that um so getting that the giving the dog the appropriate amount of stimulation and structure as well is is important yeah absolutely I mean honestly we've like I said I've done 100 well it's more than 150 probably close to 200 tours now it is, you know, I'm always there to to monitor the situation. Mm. It's perfectly normal for a dog to be a bit anxious at the start. They all mm. settle in. I've never had a dog never settle in, even rescues that have got some anxiety issues. Um, but, um, yeah, it's just it's just that thing of, of having someone there to monitor the situation. You know, I've never had anyone need to get cut off by the end of the day. We, you will get a lot of alcohol but probably for most people just the right amount. It's yeah, not, yeah. Uh, you know, they're not rolling out of the van by the end of the day, but certainly enough to warrant not driving. Well, a lot of it's tasting, right? You're not 
you know, having a whole glass every time you taste a new bottle of wine. No, no, exactly. Well, no. you might do some, some maybe. No, 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 no. <laughs> I just say each vineyard, each vineyard you're probably getting a glass of wine. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, everyone has to abide by um, responsible service of alcohol at the moment. So, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, any fun or funny stories that you could could share? Well, I knew that you were going to ask me about that, and <laughs> I, I do have some. But you know what they say: don't work with children and anim- or animals. Um, <laughs> I. I've got a couple, and I was wondering whether I should share them, but I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and, and tell you probably the funniest one. A little risque, but, you know, we had a um, a, a bit of a male gigolo dog on tour. Right. Was thankfully, <laughs> thank, thankfully, thankfully desexed, had been perfectly behaved all day, so can't complain. I didn't see this coming, but, of course, uh, you can tell I like to have a chat. When, when we go to vineyards, it's very hands-on, you know, you, we tend to talk a lot with the staff and we have got this great vibe going on. Everyone's drinking. We lost track. This We're at one of these places that was um, dogs off lead. If your dog can be trusted, the dog's off lead. The resident dogs are off lead. So there's dogs running around everywhere. Everyone's having a great time. And we've turned around. And just to sort of give you a bit of context, it was winter, the sun's going down. You know, we're not going to have much light for much longer. It's getting towards 5 o'clock. And uh, this, this gigolo dog decides to mount one of the female dogs that's there. <laughs> yeah. Well, none of us have noticed this is going on. You know, we're sort of just, you know, oh, yeah, he's fine, looking around, looking around. This could happen in a split second. <laughs> we turn around and um, he's he's done the deed and, and they're stuck. Oh, no. And, and so we're stuck there because I don't know how much you know about this, Will. Not a but lot. But... <laughs> they, they get stuck and they get stuck for a long time. Right. So we're making awkward small talk with the owners oh, no. going, we're just start, and they're like, I don't know how long this is going to take. It's, you know, the place is closing. We just need to wait till these dogs have uh, separated. I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, oh, and you know, you've got kids. This place is family friendly. So you've got kids running around. We're like, kids, don't look. Like, what are the dogs doing? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about the dogs. It's just, oh, and there's moments like that where you think, why have I made my life this difficult? I really need to do dog friendly to it. Um, but you know, that's that's probably that that's only happened once. Well, you can and, prepare prepare for that now, and if that ever happens oh, again, <laughs> I don't know. Can you? What do you do? Yeah, I, I mean, know. it's nature. But um, thankfully, he was sex, so <laughs> yeah, there was no yeah no litters that came from it. <laughs> no litters that need rehoming or anything. No, no. So yeah, yeah. And, you know, sometimes you get naughty dogs that um. We do a chocolate and wine pairing experience. Sorry, I'm not trying to do shameless promotion here, but we do a – so you come in, there's a there's a placemat. It's got your chocolates out, mm. and sometimes you do have to watch, particularly Labradors, mm. as we all know, um, will just race up and vacuum up all the chocolates before the humans have had a chance to eat them. <laughs> so yeah, you got to be careful with that. To, yeah, there's a lot of things we've learned um, through the process of doing this. So you're mm. like, right, we need to make sure the dogs – do not have access to the chocolates. I, uh, I had a friend who lives in Scone, actually, um, mm. in the country, New South Wales, and yeah, they don't have a Labrador, but they had like a mix, kind of like hunting dog. It was probably all sorts of different breeds involved in it. And one yeah. time, they had a, a pork roast in the oven, and yeah. the dog had come inside and opened the oven and pulled the whole pork roast out and eaten it. <laughs> yeah. I think that dog deserves it for being so yeah. smart. I think so. I think so. That's, that's actually scary smart. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so That's yeah. If dogs yeah. really want to get food, they'll they'll find right. a way to do it. So. Yeah, we all know chocolate's not great for dogs, so we have to watch that now. Yeah, we have to really watch it. You know, thankfully with a big dog, you're normally okay. But um, yeah. Yeah, it's, chocolate. It's, I mean, chocolate's obviously poisonous. So that's why you. Yeah, it's even more important. But if it was just other food, I guess um, wouldn't be so so much of a worry. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we've got no pot roast sitting on the table. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, if people want to give you know access you know to their lunch to their dogs you know, lunch, then that that's on them. But you know, mm. uh, yeah, it's it's funny. You, there's a lot of learnings that have happened, and uh, there's always some sort of funny caper. But in general, the tours are just good fun. There's no. You know, there's nothing crazy going on. We we always put safety first. Um, but, you know, dogs will be dogs. Hmm. I mean, they do sound like a lot of fun. It, it really, I think as soon as um, I'm allowed to break the shackles here in Sydney, my wife and I will need to plan one with you. You definitely need to. Yeah, it's yeah. so much fun. And, you know, it's gone to a point where if I turn up with a tour group and I don't have a dog, the reception I get from the vineyard staff is, 
oh. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, I always have to apologise because it's just, it makes everyone's day. It makes it interesting. Mm. Um, obviously, if people are going to bring their dog on a tour, I mean, doing a tour is not the cheapest thing in the world. Mm. Their dog's going to be okay. And we've had every breed under the sun. Mm. Um, and it's just fun. It's, you know, we had some Portuguese water dogs on tour the other day. I didn't even know that was a thing. So then we had fun, you know, every single place we went, we had to, you know, every staff member would come up, all the public would come up and go, what sort of dogs have you got? It was just mm. so much fun. Yeah. They were just beautiful. Apparently they're um, the dogs that Obama, President Obama had. Oh, right. Yeah, you must you must so, see so many different breeds of dogs. I'm sure there's lots of similar ones as well, but there must be so many different ones. Massive, yeah. Definitely there's a trend. You probably know living in Sydney, there's the cavoodle craze. I mean, mm. every second tour has a cavoodle. Um, but we've seen everything from the you know, three kilo chihuahua in a handbag mm. through to a 65 kilo, uh, I think it was a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Right. And the yeah. only place fit was in the boot. And I, <laughs> just to make it clear, we are dogs in the cabin, not in the boot. But this dog was so big that it was, you know, the only place it could really go was in the boot. And that's where it was used to going. Yeah. Now that was fine, except that the uh, group bought a lot of wine. So we've got a substantial <laughs> sized boot so that if you go crazy buying wine, that's where it goes. Yeah. The dog was in the boot. So people had boxes of wine on their laps and it was like, oh, this has never happened before. So yeah, 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 yeah it's good fun. Yeah. So where can people go if they want to find out more about Grape to Glass, which is the name of your boutique um, wine tours business? Yeah. So we've got a website. It's grapetoglass.com.au. We're also members of the Hunter Valley Wine and Tourism Association. So you can find us on their website, which is winecountry.com.au. And in the latest edition, I don't know if you can see that, nice. of the Wine Country Mag. So we're in there. Um, we're also very active on social media. Um, so at Great to Glass Hunter Valley or HV on Instagram and Facebook. Perfect. Well, I'll share all of those links in the show notes when we publish the show. But thanks so much for coming on, Vanessa. I've had a lot of fun. Yeah, it's been great. Thank you so much, Will.